Hydrology is the science, as the name would imply, of the study of water, uh, but it's an earth science, so it's not just wa the water substance, it is water as it interacts with the earth, and in particular the uh, land portions of the earth. Uh, it has to do with water evaporating or being transpired, that is carried through plants and uh, from the soil back to the atmosphere. Uh, the impact of rainfall on the surface, which uh, can run off, uh, causing floods in the extreme. It can infiltrate and percolate downward to a water table, so we have groundwater. The National Research Council published a report then that is called, the title is Opportunities in the Hydrologic Sciences, and it is now known widely as the Blue Book. And the Blue Book has been quite influential. It really laid out a framework for the needed research and education in the hydrologic sciences. It established the hydrologic sciences as an independent earth science within a community that includes oceanography and atmospheric science as well as some of the other uh, solid earth geosciences. And as a result, the National Science Foundation, the Geosciences Directorate, established a new program called the Hydrological Sciences Program. NSF sponsored the study because it has been more now than, than 20 years since the publication of the Blue Book, and uh, a number of advanced, important advances have been made in fundamental hydrology, in applied hydrology, and perhaps equally important in the development of research technology, which now allows researchers in hydrology and researchers in, at large to investigate questions that simply weren't feasible to investigate uh, in 1991 when the, when the Blue Book came out. And they wanted a committee to basically take stock of the field, that is to assess the accomplishments and where the field was, and also what the opportunities were, what new opportunities there were for research that would uh, contribute to solving some of the pressing societal problems that we now have with water resources. The uh, NRC appointed a committee of 15 members, and because the hydrologic sciences includes a fairly broad range of subjects across the earth and even the life sciences, uh, the committee represented uh, very, very broad interests. The committee identified three broad topics that we think are ripe opportunities for research that can not only advance our basic understanding but also address some uh, very key issues of societal concern. These three are uh, the water cycle, gaining a better understanding, uh, two, the intersection between water and life, and three, providing clean water for the planet. The first has to do with the interrelationships between humans and the hydrologic cycle, both in terms of how the hydrologic cycle impacts humans, and one obvious case has to do with the frequency and existence of floods and droughts, and the other element to it is how do, how do humans themselves impact the hydrologic cycle, which we do with almost everything else that we do. So the simple act of, of grading a, a housing pad or paving a parking lot or clear-cutting a forest has significant implications for the hydrologic cycle that are not often uh, well understood. Water for life and understanding how water supports life, not just human life, but the environment in general and what the role of water is in facilitating the provision of environmental services which are increasingly important and increasingly endangered uh, is another area that uh, is an important uh, avenue that needs to be pursued 
by hydrologists in the coming decade. If we go to the third one, uh, clean water for the planet, uh, providing safe drinking water for the world is, is one of the Millennium Project's goals. And in the U.S. we don't think about that too much because we uniformly have safe drinking water. Nevertheless, we are concerned in this country about a range of new topics that, that really represent challenges for, for hydrologists and other scientists that uh, work in the hydrologic sciences uh, relative to water quality. Uh, water is the universal solvent and so of course it dissolves compounds readily easily which means that it becomes contaminated r readily and we need a better understanding of how contamination occurs, what the chemistry of it is, what the toxicology of it is, how you clean up contamination once it's occurred. We need to be certain that we are investing in the education of hydrologists who will be the hydrologic researchers of the future. And that means that we need to be sure that we're training enough of them and also that we're training them in ways that they can grow with the science so that they can be effective a decade or two hence when all of the technology and techniques of research have changed in which the findings in the next decade or so uh, will provide them with a new platform from which they can move out and, and examine new questions. I think one of the main messages, if I have to uh, pick one, is that we can see that these issues that we are grappling with, these scientific issues that we're grappling with today, are all very complex. It's, they, they tend not to be questions that have very simple answers. And so interdisciplinarity is sometimes a sometimes overused term, but I think we make a strong case that we really do have to have scientists who will engage to study many aspects of the problem, the relationships between water and climate, between water and erosion, between water and living organisms, between water and how contaminants are transported, these all require collaboration.